Hi, everybody. It is Carrie from New Leader University and Stand Up Retail. And I'm here with one of our first of hopefully many, many book reviews coming up on leadership and how you can become a more successful, more satisfied, and more career driven professional out in the marketplace. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Retail Pride. And I'm pretty excited about this because this actually is one of the only, if not the only retail specific book out there in the marketplace today. So buckle up, we're gonna dig in, we're gonna go through some pros, we're gonna go through a few of the shortcomings, we're gonna discuss who the author is, and I'm gonna give you my takeaways. Let's go. So I chose Retail Pride because it's really in line with what we're trying to do at Stand Up Retail. It actually touches on a major point, and which is ironic, happened to come out right around the same time that myself and my partner and co-founder were discussing trying to provide some content and some lessons and some appreciation for the multitudes of people who work in the retail industry who are feeling pretty down. Going into the pandemic, there were less people on the selling floor. There was less leadership oversight. There also was less time dedicated towards engaging activities, leadership development, or even just basic skill development so people could be successful in their jobs in retail. Now, as a store-based retailer for over 20 years myself, I know how tough it is out there. And I also understand what it is on the ground. I understand how it can feel like you might not be seen or heard. I've worked in both extremes. I've worked for the largest, most chaotic store footprint in America, in the heart of Manhattan, for a major, major, major retailer, and seen the chaos that can happen and make you feel like you aren't seen. I've also worked in a very remote market for a very, very small location within that same company. And I understand what it means when you don't have the resources to give the team that reports to you what they deserve, but also understand what it means as a team member to feel like you're missing something. Stand Up Retail aims to change that mentality and to put firmly back in your hands the control of your development. We understand what it means to work in retail. We understand what it means to lead in retail. And so we craft lessons based on skills that are real, skills that really will improve you in the retail marketplace versus a generic skill set that will be applicable to any sort of industry. What I love about this book, going into it before we go into the detail, is that it has the same intention. And the other thing is that retailers always overcomplicate things. We really, really do. We say a lot of, it's so simple, but then we have all these complicated processes. This book is not complicated. If anything, this book is such a basic guide to anyone in retail that it might initially turn some people off. However, I'm here to say, please don't let this book turn you off. It's actually lovely. And we're gonna dig in a little bit more after we learn a little bit about the author. This book is written by Ron Thurston, and he is a 25 plus year veteran of the retail industry. He actually probably is more of a lifelong retailer because as you learn through some of his stories, retail had a very heavy impact on who he was and who he became as he grew into adulthood. He started as a part-time selling associate and worked his way all the way up through many, many different roles, many different companies, to even become a vice president of stores for a super large, impactful brand, Intermix. He currently has a podcast and is a best-selling author on Amazon. His podcast is also doing a United States tour called Retail in America, where he's traveling the country, going out and meeting and shaking hands and inspiring people who work in the stores and really reinforcing that they are retail heroes out there in the market. Another quick note is I want to let you know who this book is really for and who it might not be for. This book would be 
probably the most impactful for a new or aspiring leader in the retail field, or possibly as a guidebook or an inspiration for somebody who's considering stepping into leadership or maybe has talked to their leader about putting their hat in the ring for promotion in the future. Who this is not for is for a long time veteran, unless they go into it with some understanding that there's going to be a lot of basics covered. This might also not be for somebody who is disengaged with their work, seriously disengaged. The challenges will be overcoming the positive nature of this book because it is a guide to celebrating your service, celebrating the work that you do every day. There are so many lessons in this book, even though it is a book about celebrating your career in retail, that it is valuable for all of them. However, without going into it knowing what you're going to get, there could be some turnoffs for people who are struggling or who have been in the industry for a long time. Let's get to the details. First off, this book is obsessively, intensely positive, and I love that. In the retail environment, we can tend to focus on the bad or the negative that interrupts the good flow of the day. We bring joy to customers every day. Our job is to service someone and to make them happy. So yes, we are in the happiness business, and this book does not let you forget that. I like that about this book. It does make it seem a little bit polished, but the good thing is, is he backs this up with statistics. He shows you who work in a store, how important you truly are. He gives statistics about the percentage of business that's actually done in the store versus online. He talks about how one in four people have this probably most likely, definitely, their first job when they enter the workforce. It is a very impactful industry. It is a critical industry for the global economy. When you get that first job in retail, one of two things happens. It goes wrong where you are not engaged and where you learn that dissatisfaction probably comes with this industry or you get it right and you see the benefits immediately. There are two extremes. This book goes through the positive extreme. And that is a very good thing because that's pretty much who this is geared towards, is people who are just entering retail, who see the promise in the future and just need that little push and little reinforcement. Another positive about this book is the fact that every single example about every single skill is relevant to the retail environment. There are no cushy, big leadership theories discussed in this book. It is nitty gritty, down to basics, and just what retailers need. Retailers don't have time to go into long books about theory. Leaders don't have time to try and figure out how can I practice this in my location or in my day-to-day -day activity when I work within a store. This book lays it all out for you. It actually says it's a guide right on the cover. It is a guide and it's a guide to working in retail written by somebody who has worked in retail. So he knows what he's talking about. Another positive of this book is its focus and its organization. While the author does sprinkle quite a few stories about his personal upbringing or his personal work history, there's also lots and lots of great quotes from people who work in the industry about the topic at hand. Everything is brought into focus around a very relevant topic. And it's actually kind of sectioned off into thirds. My favorite part is the last third of the book. Um, I think the most impactful part for the biggest audience group would probably be the middle part, which is all centered around the pillars that the author feels are important to be satisfied and successful within the retail career. What's super interesting to me is the fact that he goes after three concepts and skills that are really poorly defined when it comes to corporate trainings. 
These skills are always talked about. These skills are on annual reviews. These skills are referenced during feedback sessions over and over and over again. However, there's never really any concrete actions or concrete solutions on how a person can get better at these skills. I'm not going to spoil it. You got to pick up the book. It's fantastic. I love it. And as we get to the end, I'll tell you exactly why I think this section is the most impactful. The last thing I'll say that I really like about this book is it's clearly written by a retailer for retailers, which is 99.9% of why Stand Up Retail started. We wanted to create a space across multiple platforms where people in retail could reach out and actually hear language that they were used to hearing and hear it from people who understand, truly understand what it's like to walk a mile in their shoes. This book is that. The language is fantastic. There's no highbrow leadership theory. There's no overly complicated processes. In fact, sometimes this seems so simple, it shouldn't have to be written in a book, which is why a lot of corporate training programs miss on this part. My personal favorite part speaks about culture. And culture is a word and a concept that is used everywhere, yes, However, it has a much different meaning when you get into the retail industry or into a specific retail location. Building culture, creating culture, reinforcing culture, influencing culture, creating a culture that is different, creating a culture shift. All of these terms are used in corporate trainings, in boardrooms, in PowerPoint decks, in Zoom meetings, in leadership meetings. But what everyone struggles with on a store level is what actions can I take? I personally, as the employee, this book does a wonderful job of giving you some concrete ways that you can work to build, influence, or create a shift to the positive for the culture in your location. And I love that. Now, there are some things that I would have liked to have seen in this book that unfortunately weren't there. Um, there's not a lot, uh, but at the same time, I'm not quite sure if I was the intended audience. So let's just go over a couple of the things that I think could have made this more impactful and more realistic. I feel like it could have been a little more balanced. Yes, it is a book about celebrating your career in retail. However, the reality of retail is that there are outside forces that negatively influence us every day, multiple times a day. And 90% of those are not controllable. It's very, very easy for people in retail to say to another person who may be struggling, just control the controllables. Controlling the controllables is not an action. It is a dream. And it often is a struggle for many, many people, which leads to disengagement and an eventual exit from the retail industry. Even if it was just a short chapter, acknowledging the harsh realities that are out there and giving some tips about how you can get yourself back on track or how you can dig yourself out of that negative mindset, I think it would have been much more balanced. Or even still, if that was sprinkled a little bit through each of the sections, I think it really would have been impactful and it might have opened this book up to be more impactful for a wider audience. The other challenge that I had was that the first third of this book was extremely basic to the point of it being so basic, it almost didn't feel like it needed to be said because it made me wonder who wouldn't know this about retail already? Maybe it was meant as a reminder, but that's not how it was presented. Maybe if it was presented a little bit differently, like here's a reminder about why working in retail is amazing, that would have set differently than me. However, that's not really how it was presented. And it was a clear choice that the author made for the direction of the book. I'm not saying it's a bad choice. I'm saying I feel it could have been more impactful slightly differently. Um, however, I also am not the intended audience. I'm not the ideal reader. For the ideal reader, 
maybe that person really doesn't understand what's great about retail. And they do need to see these things because they haven't experienced these things yet. But the way it was presented made me wonder who that ideal reader was. And when I found myself answering the question based on just that first section of the book, covering the basics and why it's great to work in retail, all of the data-driven points that were so impactful kind of fell away because it made me wonder, is this for someone who's never worked in retail, who doesn't understand what it's like? Is this a book for someone who's never had to work with the public before or been in a work environment where they've needed to interact with people on a more professional, less personal basis? And then it made me wonder, if that's who the ideal reader was, why are they picking up this book? Because it's about celebrating your accidental career, which does mean that you've been in it for a while. So to me, it felt like a contradictory choice. However, the, the information is true. The information is very valid. However, it felt misplaced and I feel it could have been more impactful if it was approached from a different perspective. Lastly, this book definitely reads like it was written for an extremely niche group of retail employees, which excludes a lot of employees who need a book like this. While this is a book about celebrating your accidental career in retail, like you didn't choose it, but all of a sudden you're moving forward and you're progressing and you're getting promoted and you're spending more time in it than you anticipated, that's all well and good. However, this actually has many, many powerful tools. And while he does promote this as a guidebook for people in retail, I think it is a guidebook for your satisfaction in your career in retail versus just celebrating your career in retail. All of these lessons that are in this book have value for all sorts of different kinds of employees, from the most highly engaged to the most disengaged. I think there was a bit of a missed opportunity to broaden the scope just a little bit. I think the audience might have been too narrow, but at the same time, if you have an advocate there explaining what this book is about, I think a lot of people are going to get value out of this book. All right, so let's recap. I've given you my thoughts about what's great about this book. I've given you a couple of the shortcomings. While there are very few of them, there are a few, but if you know that going into reading this book, I think it'll help you push through the parts that might be a little bit too over the top for you. So my overall impressions, yes, this book is definitely worth picking up. Not only because it is a short read, it doesn't require a massive commitment or a massive amount of time to get through. It's only about 180 pages, so could easily be tackled at your leisure throughout the week, whether on breaks or at night or over the weekend if you wanted to tackle it on the weekend. It's also reasonably priced. It is only $17.99 for a physical copy and $8.99 for a digital download on Amazon, which when you really think about it, Considering this book is hyper-targeted towards retail and there's hardly anything else out there like it that gives you real-world examples, that gives you a true actual guide of things that you can do in the retail space, that's a very worthy investment. I'd actually suggest this as a great tool or a welcome kit for a new leader, um, a newly promoted leader who's internal, who's worked for you for a little bit, or even an outside hire that's coming in who may not have a ton of experience within the store-based retail environment. It is excellent. It's almost specifically written for that person in mind. And I can't think of a better gift than something that's gonna help set somebody up for a very successful and a very satisfying career within retail, especially working in your environment. The only other thing I would probably suggest getting that person would be a planner, an effective planner, because as we know, digital planners are great, but in retail, we thrive on things that we can physically hold and refer back to, especially considering we're trying to anniversary or do better every year, every quarter, every month, every week. 
that physical reference tool is great. So I'm actually gonna link one of my favorite planners uh, in the description as well. Now, if you are a store manager, or a leader of other leaders, I would actually suggest picking up one physical copy for your office. The reason being is that it tackles some of the toughest skills that are most vaguely defined, described, or taught in any sort of corporate program. And I love this book for that. It goes through four concepts that are used pretty much every day and are part of every single leader's development plans however, are the hardest to articulate and are often the hardest to give real world examples for how people can work on building and strengthening these skills. Having a book on hand for you to pull out during a coaching session, or if you just need a quick refresher yourself on a different way of describing or defining or giving a different example of how to leverage the skill, this book has it for you. There are so few leadership books out there that are specific to retailers. Yes, we like to think we're special, but sometimes special means that it's hard for us to find the information that we need because a lot of it is presented in a way that's not relevant to what we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. This book really understands what it means to be in a store, to be dealing with customers face-to-face -face every day, to be also dealing with a lot of uncontrollables. And that's another reason I think that this book would be good to have a physical copy for your elevated leaders. In short, it's definitely a worthy pickup. There are so few books out there that are geared directly towards retailers that I felt, even though I'm not actively in a store anymore, this was important for me to have in my toolkit. I have a physical copy and you know what? For one week after this video posts live, anyone who puts enter to win in the comments will be entered to win their own copy of this book. It's really good to know that here at Stand Up Retail, what we believe in is also echoed by some of the biggest industry leaders that are out there trying to positively influence the people who choose or maybe accidentally find their way into our industry an important industry and what we hope to do at Stand Up Retail, just like Ron Thurston hopes to do with this book, Retail Pride, is to help show you how you can turn what you consider an accidental career into a purposeful, intentional, and successful one. All right, we'll be back next month with a new review. See you later. It's Carrie from Stand Up Retail and hope you guys have a wonderful day. Whether you are in the retail industry, which is my specialty, or if you're looking to build leadership skills across any industry, we have short lessons from New Leader University, as well as we have longer, more retail-based or customer service-based podcasts based on leadership skills needed to be successful that are about a half hour, maybe an hour when we have an interview guest. So you should definitely follow along. You can find all of that here on our YouTube channel and we post them elsewhere um, on our specific content channels as well.